Today's Tanya for the 27th day of Kislev is at the beginning of Patek Dalit on Daf Ches Omad The number at the bottom of the page is 14. In Patek Gimel, in yesterday's Shia, the Alter Rebbe explained the ten faculties that make up, that the soul contains, three of them in intellect and seven of them emotion, and explained how Chochmah and Bina are the father and the mother that create the emotion, as, for example, understanding the greatness of God produces fear of God, and, and then also love of God, a desire to be closer, and that Das is the preservative, is what gives the emotion its stability and its permanence and its reality, because Das means attachment to the idea, becoming one with the concept. In Patek Dalit, the al Rebbe introduces the garments of the soul, the, the tools with which the ten powers of the, of the neshama express themselves outwardly. Perek Dalit. Another thing that every godly soul has is shleisha levushim, is three garments. In addition to the ten powers, the neshama also has three garments. Now, garments are different from powers of the soul because the powers of the soul are in intimate parts of the soul and are not easily changed or exchanged. When a person understands a certain way, to change the way he understands takes a great effort because his understanding, his intellect, is an internal and therefore more permanent part of the neshama than the garments. And the same is true with emotion that to change an emotion to love when you don't love or to not love when you do love, this is a difficult process because you're dealing with an internal change, a change in the neshama itself. Whereas garments of the soul, they are referred to as garments precisely because as garments or like garments, they can either be put on or taken off without any, painlessly, without any great effort. The three garments are Mahshava Dibaru Maisa Shal Tayag Mitras Atayla. The thought, speech, and deed of the Tayag Mitras of the Tayla. Since we're talking about the godly soul, the thought, speech, and deed of a godly soul is thought, speech, and deed of Tayla and Mitras. When he will describe, when the al will describe the animal soul, which also has the three garments, thought, speech, and deed, but then the garments are unholy, they are not in matters of Tayla and Mitras. So the garments of thought, speech, and deed are garments because a person can act or not act, and in the middle of an act he can stop without any great effort. In the middle of speaking, one can stop without any, with a little more effort, but not with any great effort. And even in thought, where a person can't stop thinking completely, but he can easily or readily change his, the, the topic or the subject of the thought from one subject to another, even from one extreme to another. He can think positive thoughts one moment, and then when he decides, he can turn around and begin thinking negative thoughts without going through any traumatic changes. Another thing about garments is that they are so external to the person himself that not only can he wear his garment or not wear his garment with equal ease, but he can also wear someone else's garment. So that when a person is wearing a garment, it need not necessarily be his own. A person cannot feel feelings that are not his own. A person's feelings are always his own. The way a person understands is, he can only understand that the way his mind works, the way he understands. But a person can think somebody else's thoughts. You read something that somebody else wrote, and you can think what he wrote. You may not agree with him. It may not appeal to you, but you can think it. So even thought, which is the most internal garment of the three, Yet even in thought, you can be thinking thoughts that are not your own at all, that you yourself don't agree with. So in, in, in the godly soul, thought, speech, and deed are, are in Teda and Mitzvahs. When a person performs in, act, in action the act of Mitzvahs, called Mitzvahs. And in speech, he engages in the explanation of the mitzvahs and the study of it. 
studying it out loud, and the details of those mitzvahs, and in thought he comprehends all that he is able to understand in the different levels of Teda, Pshat, Remez, Drush, and Seid, Harei Klolus Tayag Eve Nafshi, then all the 613 limbs of his soul are Melubosh in the Tayag Mitzvah Sateda, are clothed within the 613 mitzvahs of Teda. Teda has 613 mitzvahs, the Neshama has 613 parts, and the body has 613 parts. So then, when a person thinks and speaks and does Teda and mitzvahs, then all 613 parts of the Neshama find expression through those three garments, they find expression into Teda and mitzvahs. So the Neshama connects to mitzvahs through the garments. Ube Pratus, more specifically, the Chinas Chabad Shebenafshei, the Chach Mabina Das of the Neshama, clothes itself and expresses itself into Teda and mitzvahs by Miluboshes, by Sagas are clothed in the understanding of Teda, which means primarily through the garment of thought. To the degree that a person understands the four levels of Teda according to his capacity, his intellectual capacity, and also according to the Shavish of his Neshama, to the root of his Neshama above. Certain Neshamas, because of their origin, are more apt to understand one part of Teda, whether it's Pshat or Demez or Drush or Seid, and another person, because of his Shadish and Neshama, will excel in a different part of Torah. And the emotions, where do they express themselves in Torah and Mitzvahs? The emotions, which are fear and love of God, and the branches and the offshoots of these emotions, as we said earlier, love and fear are the primary emotions, and the other emotions are branches and, and offshoots of the primary emotions. So where do the emotions, all of them, express themselves? Meluboshes bekiyum hamitzvus b'maisu b'dibur. They express themselves more through the other two garments, the active performance of the mitzvah, which is the garment of action, will b'dibur, and in speech, shehu talmatayda shekeneged kula. Speech is the involvement of the engagement in the study of Taylor and it is through speech and through action that emotions find expression. So intellect, Chabad, expresses itself primarily through the garment of thought and emotions express themselves primarily through the garments of action and speech. How does love express itself? In the act of a mitzvah it's because love is the source, the root, of, the, of all 248 positive mitzvahs. In other words, because a person loves God, that's what motivates him to fulfill the mitzvahs, to do the positive mitzvahs. He wants to be closer to God, which is the instinct or the impulse of love is to become closer. And how do you become closer? By doing the mitzvah. And from the love, hengnim shochez, the act of the mitzvahs flow from that love, and without that love, they don't have a true existence, a true fulfillment. Not that the mitzvah isn't a mitzvah, but that the person isn't doing it truly unless he's doing it out of love. But even if the person isn't doing it truly, the mitzvah still remains a divine act and has infinite in- significance because the one who fulfills the mitzvah with truth, in truth, who is the one who loves God. And he wants to truly cleave to God. And there's no truer way to cleave to God other than through the fulfillment of the 248 commandments which are compared to the to which are sometimes which are referred to as the two hundred and forty eight limbs of the king. So that in God also we say that there are two hundred and forty eight limbs just as in, there are in the body, just as there is in Torah, two hundred and forty eight 
248 limbs, and in the neshama, 248 limbs. Kamesh Kosim, what as is explained elsewhere. So the love is the source, the inspiration, the motivation for the performance of the 248 positive mitzvahs. So through the act of the mitzvah, the love is expressed. How does fear express itself in the act of a mitzvah? The hayira he shayish l'shasa says, fear is the root or the inspiration in the in the care that a person takes not to violate one of the 365 prohibitions or negative commandments. Ki he he observes those commandments. He refrains from sinning because he's afraid. Limrei ben melach malchi amlochem makadish baruchu. He is afraid to rebel. To mutiny against the King of Kings against God. Or fear can also be on a deeper, more, in, more internal level, and that is that he is ashamed of God's greatness. To do that which goes against God's will, to go against His will, and to do that which is evil in God's eyes. All those things that God finds uh, distasteful, which He hates, heim haklipes v'sitra acha, which is a klipa and sitra acha. This fear that is called shame is similar to the feeling that a person has, the fear that a person has when he's in the presence of a great chacham or a great tzaddik. The fear is a feeling of shame, a feeling of insignificance. He is ashamed of his own smallness in the presence of greatness. And this is a deeper fear than the fear of God's, of God's authority. So the person who is afraid of God on either level will refrain from doing a sin because he doesn't want to do what is evil in God's eye. And what is evil in God's eye? All those things that are unholy, klipa, and come from the side that is, that is not holiness. And where does this klipa receive its nourishment from the person? Here below, how does klipa thrive? Because it, it siphons off like a parasite. It draws life off that which is holy, and that is the person, the, the Jew, and how does the klipa get hold of a Jew how, does he, how is he able to siphon energy from, a, from the holiness of a Jew? It is through the Jews committing any of the 365 negative, negative commands, prohibitions. When a Jew does an Aveda, he is feeding holy energy into unholiness. And that's how unholiness grows and thrives. So he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to feed God's enemy, to support God's enemy, in, in the presence of God and because of that fear he refrains from doing the sin so the, the love and fear the emotions of the godly soul find expression in the act of the mitzvah either in the positive mitzvah or in refraining from the negative mitzvah love expresses itself in the act of the mitzvah and fear expresses itself in the refusal or in the care to not commit a negative commandment In the Hayyim Yayim for the 27th of Kislev, for the third day of Hanukkah, the Rebbe writes that the second time that the Alta Rebbe was imprisoned, in the year Tovkuf Samach Aleph, which was the second imprisonment, he was not he, he mistreated. He was not kept under, under conditions as severe as the first. But the accusations were more severe because the primary slander had been against the teachings of Hasidus. Not a personal attack on the Rebbe, but against the teachings of Hasidus. And the opposition from the Misnagdim was very strong. He was incarcerated in a fortress called Taina Soviet, and he was set free on the third night of Hanukkah. In Teda Sholem, on page 84, it brings the same story, and it says that Alter Rebbe was set free on the fifth night of Hanukkah. And the Rebbe, is Gesundsein, says is, is, that we, sh- we should assume that both are correct, and that there were aspects of Geula on both days. 
not in the spiritual sense, but in the physical sense.